So we you mentioned the World Bank, the IMF <clears throat> in my world, absolute gangsters. Um, you know, like we, you were talking about John Perkins last time. I mean, these are tools. They are enforcers. They are financial um, weapons that are being used. And but they're you. They're always really cute. They're always being presented beautifully. Ah, uh, we will give you such a beautiful loan that you will never ever be able to pay back. And we will do it so that it was like all of these. And the IMF is another bad boy, bad boy, bad boy. So um, in my world, I I absolutely do not like them. I would stay a mile away from them. So anyone who's the new head of the World Bank, well, congratulations to that individual. Does that individual have my respect? No, that's about <laughs> it. And uh, because often these people are put there without really knowing what's going on behind them. So they're a pretty face, a pretty cover that is being used because they look good. They speak beautifully. They they uh, can articulate themselves and they do not see the death tool that is behind them. If they do it many times, it's in the background. You have to see behind the scenes what is actually going on. What do not listen to the words, they will tell you whatever beautiful words you want to hear freedom, democracy, liberty, all of that. And then, why, why does not nothing ever happen after an election? It's the same thing that just continues and continues. In this, it's more or less in all countries that I've seen the same system. And so, have I ever voted? No, never have I ever listened to a politician, maybe two and a half minutes in total. Absolutely not. There, and I know you're, uh, uh, I think, Richard, that you come from a political background. I can only say that I have never met anyone uh, that I feel that this is a decent, honest person. I would so love to be corrected and find, no, no, you were totally wrong. Thank you so much. I feel that is wonderful. But the people I see, uh, especially now, with the young global leaders and the whole thing that there's an overtake in the world uh, with all of these. And they are super corrupt. As soon as when they're part of the Bilderberg group, when they're part of these, uh, the fourth industrial revolution, when they meet in Davos, every single one of them, especially if they get invited more than once, then, you know, boom, they're in the game. I've even been one of the speakers outside the Bilderberg meeting. I've been standing right outside when they were meeting in the building behind me, 2014 in Copenhagen. I mean, these it's it's amazing because when you look at so much horrible stuff that is happening in the world and so few individuals that are behind it, th that's the good news because we are so many and I keep meeting absolutely stunning individuals all over the world. And I don't know how many countries I've been to. I keep bumping into absolutely amazing people. There is no such thing as an ordinary person in my world. Absolutely not. Some of them I don't like, and some of them don't like me. Fair enough. There you go. That's life. But most people, I would say 95% don't want war. They don't want conflicts. They don't want all of these type of things. There were even a documentary made where they went, this team went around in the, I don't know, to 50, 60, 80 countries, something like that. And they were interviewing people saying, what do you want out of life? And people said more or less exactly the same thing. They said, I want peace. I want a good life for my family. I want to have friends. I would like a party from now and then. I would like to enjoy enjoy life. I would like to have, you know, enough money so I'm I'm can find can get along and so it's only the the things that where where the difference came in was politics, religion and sports. These were the ones that divided. These were the ones that divided. And so why not focus on the 95% yeah. all of the things we have in common yeah 